Now, few would disagree that the main function of education is to produce people with appropriate skills and knowledge to enable them to participate in the nation's economy, right? The nature of schooling tends to reflect the nature of society in which it is founded. For example, even in the 19th century, life in the United States was firmly based on school mirrored that lifestyle. There were one-room school houses was sufficient to meet the needs of an agrarian society. Schools, uh, schools started late and did early in the day to allow time for students to help families to work in the farm. School dismissed entirely during the summer so that children could help parents in the farm. Controlled by largely just by teachers, education focused predominantly on basic skills. Teachers taught reading, writing, arithmetic to complement the skills students learn outside school. There was a strong relationship between what is learned in the school, at church and mostly what is learned at home. During this time parents took full responsibility to many of the students learning, particularly from the non-curricular perspective. By the beginning of 20th century, the industrial revolution brought about drastic changes to the economy of many countries. Many people move to live in cities and working in factories. As a consequence, new skills were needed in an industrial society. It was that great change that took place in education. Now, the curriculum had to give in to this great change within society because now the curriculum has to accommodate the needs of a society that is situated in an industrial setting. Students were taught, uh, students were taught fact, uh, facts and skills that were needed for an industrial job which they were likely to hold in their entire lives. One room schools were eventually replaced by large buildings. Students were uh, sorted by grades set in straight rows with the teacher in the front of the classroom controlling the learning. They needed learning to be more predictable, just like you would predict products out of a factory. Uh, organization, organized and institutional testing were introduced so that one could certify one's learning, just like a quality control process in the education system. The curriculum was compartmentalized and taught by separate bits and pieces. Similar to the way the work to complete in an assembly line, school became efficient school, uh, efficient social institution, with the goal of turning out identical products. Because until now, not many of us can explain why people are taught by age, not by ability, and we can't explain why we choose certain ages to have exams. Why can't people take exams when they are ready? So these were all the uh, inspiration that came out of the industrial society. Then what happened during the 70s, a microprocessor and its explosive growth of networking and information technology appeared. The 80s and 90s witnessed growth of a new kind of growth. It's called knowledge economy. Multimedia innovations and growth of the internet have transformed our ability to access information. Despite all these challenges, we still educate students in the subject uh, factory school model, factory school model. Many of the schools are being taught currently are intended for jobs either no longer exist or will radically be different by the time students graduate. We, while believing or while being aware of trends, educators are still unsure to what curriculum and post-industrial style education should be. Without, without doubt, in a post-industrial or information society, a new curriculum will be needed. It is envisioned that a new model, a new model education will be more personalized, more specific to an individual needs and desire and the pace would be predicted or the pace would be determined by the learner instead of the institution. 
In other words, education will be more differentiated to meet the students' learning needs. Students will be challenged with higher expectation of learning and encouraged to think critically, creatively as they solve problems. They will spend more time uh, using information technology and learning independently, partly because now learning independently is now the way of the future. Since the future, new, due to the sudden explosion and boom of knowledge, one will not be able to deliver knowledge in a prescribed 5-year, 10-year package. See, in a, in, a con, in a traditional setting, if I had to go to uh, 6 years of primary school, it was sufficient because there was enough knowledge that I could be packed in a 6-year package that will last me a lifetime. I mean, just think of this as a picnic basket. If I was to live only a day, if I carried a basket there, I could easily fit in enough food in that basket to carry out an entire day's sustenance. Now suddenly, my eating diet or my requirements are a bit more complex. So I have a slightly bigger basket. So I, w I went to another five years of secondary school education. They gave me a bigger basket. I mean, I had to, I had to carry a slightly bigger basket. So I filled it up with food and it will carry me out for the rest of my life. So uh, you will still hear people talking about how they only had uh, primary education and that was enough to, to live a long, decent life. Then you will also hear about people, oh, those days, you know, prime, secondary education was sufficient to, to do things. And then you had the tertiary education. They given, you had to even carry a bigger basket than uh, another four years of tertiary education was sufficient to live through your lives. But now the complexity is so great that you, the basket cannot be big enough to carry the things that you need to survive in, in a knowledge-based economy because the, the whole economy itself is based on, on knowledge as opposed to using knowledge to function in a particular system. Because to use knowledge to function within a particular system then the num amount of knowledge is finite. But if the knowledge itself, is, sorry, if the economy itself is knowledge, then it's infinite. The notion of how much knowledge do you really need to cope, and, and no one can actually say this. So then, learning becomes a lifestyle, because as long as you live, there is constant change in life. As long as you accept this change and you need to overcome change, uh, to participate in these changes, then learning needs to continuously take place.